So today we're going to be looking to create a jack-o'-lantern with a realistic pumpkin. We're going to get into understanding how to create depth and dimension, three-dimensionality inside where the cutouts of the jack-o'-lantern face would be. And we can apply this method into something more complicated, creating your own stylistic approach, whether you want to draw a witch, a face, many different things. But we're looking to understand how to grasp the concept of dimensionality and make it look as realistic and as cool as possible. So we're going to first open up our file and we're going to go up to file open and go into my downloads, choose out my pumpkin and we have the image that we're going to work with. I've already prepared the image with a transparent background and we're going to look to build out all the necessary backgrounds, coloring, modification to make this as strong as possible. To begin with, I am going to look to duplicate out my background layer, this layer zero. I can rename the first layer pumpkin, just so I know what I'm working with. And I'm going to right click on this layer and duplicate layer. I like to have a duplicate just in case I have to do some modifications or if I want to add an additional design later on, I have a pumpkin that I can work with but I'm going to hide the original. And now that we have our duplicate, I'm also going to create a new layer to fill our background color with right now a black color. We can always put a more decorative background to fit the scene later on, but I'm going to rename this layer background. Just double click on where the name is. I'm going to click and drag this down to the bottom layer. To fill this layer in, I can go over to the left side navigation about midway down in the toolbar, I'm going to go over to my paint bucket tool. With my paint bucket tool, I currently have foreground color set to orange, background to yellow. I could always change out the foreground color, or I can go up to file at the top navigation, or edit at the top navigation, down to fill. And I'm going to change where it says contents to black, and click OK. So we see that this area is now filled with black. And we're going to now look to reselect on our pumpkin copy. I'll call this pumpkin two, just to identify. With our pumpkin two layer, we're gonna add a layer mask. Down at the bottom of the layers panel, we see a little white box with a black circle inside. This is add a layer mask. If I click on this, it will add a layer mask next to our original, the pumpkin two image, in which we can cut out and create different variations to show a face, whether it's basic shapes using the polygon lasso tool or more complicated shapes using the pen tool. But we want to make sure that we have the bounding box selected around the white area, not onto the object or the pumpkin. We're not actually modifying the pumpkin. This will allow us the freedom to fix any mistakes or add different areas if need be. So we're going to start by going over to the left side navigation, third tool, left side. The polygonal lasso tool will allow us to have straight lines without having to draw by hand. It's just a matter of clicking point by point. So if I wanted to start out, I'm going to look to draw out a simple triangle shape. I'm going to start on the left side to give myself an eye. I was going to connect back to where I started. And we can see the ants marching line appearing around. This moving dashed line allows me to know what the selection is. So understand that with the selection, I'm going to look to hit backspace or delete, but pay attention to your layer mask. When I do hit delete, you're going to notice that it turns to a black area. This represents that it is a dead area, area that you cannot see. We can get it back if we need to make any modifications. If I deselect de and I go over to my paintbrush, because I have white in my paintbrush, I'd be painting white back into this layer mask. I'm going to up the size of my brush using the right bracket, or I can use left bracket to shrink it down. But if I use the paintbrush with white on my foreground, it will paint areas back in. You can see I have a soft brush right now, but if I wanted to modify this anymore, I could adjust my hardness at the top navigation and click and drag to erase it back or paint it back into place. But I can always hit 
Command or Control Z to undo. And we see that we do have the triangle shape. If I wanted to take the selection that I currently have, I'm going to click on the polygonal or lasso tool or go into the rectangle marquee tool or elliptical marquee tool, one of the selection buttons. I can right click in the selected area. And I'm going to hit free transform in which I can then flip horizontally and bring this over to the right side of my object. Now I have a mirror image of the eyes that I did for my design. And we'll notice that I do have it appearing on the actual layer mask. That's a little bit more complicated of a method. If you prefer, you can always just simply deselect. I'm going to go over to the polygon lasso tool and look to simply draw out the mirror shape of my eye over on the right side of the face. So again, I have the area selected, I have the layer mask, and I can simply hit delete or backspace, cutting out the area. Again, if I do want to paint in areas, if I decide that I wanted to give a pupil to my subject, I can draw out an oval shape. And if I want to draw out the oval shape on both eyes at the same time, I can click and drag, holding down shift, so that both areas are selected. With these areas, rather than trying to paint it back in, I can fill in the area. I can go edit fill and paint it with white, or I can go over to the paint bucket tool. And because I have foreground color is white with the layer mask selected, you see that it fills back into the space. You do have to be careful when you do this method because it will leave subtle lines that you may not necessarily recognize at first. But if I take a closer look, there is a little separation between the original selections. But if I do want to fill this in, I go up to Edit, Fill. I'm going to change my contents to white and click OK. And it does fill in the entire space. And if you notice, I click off, I can see the eyes very well, very easily inside where I've just painted it back in. I'm going to, look to, I'm going to look to continue to draw out the jack-o'-lantern face. I'm going to add a nose. With the nose, I'm going to keep it very basic for this, but we're going to draw a triangle facing downward. And I can hit backspace again, or delete. And then finally, we're going to deselect and look to draw out the mouth area. Understand, because we're using the polygonal lasso tool, you won't necessarily be able to create a curve with this tool. Rather, you want to use small anchor points that will help allow us to create the sense of a curve. And I can add in teeth into the design, just clicking point by point, taking my time through the design. And I want to create the sense that it's almost smiling. Then I'm going to go downward towards the bottom of the mouth. And I'm also going to take a look at what happens when I create teeth that are facing from the bottom portion of the mouth. And if I ever want to undo a drawing, modify a certain line, maybe I want to give it a sharp tooth. You can see the difference between a sharp tooth and a flat square tooth. I'm going to look to go back up to where I started, and now I have the selected area. I can always adjust the placement if I need. And I'm going to, again, make sure I have the layer mask and hit delete or backspace, cutting out the area. I can deselect, command or control D. And if I do want to make any type of modifications, I can always hit Command or Control Z to undo, or look to just add in some areas. If I want to have the mouth a little bit larger overall, I'm going to redraw over some areas. Just give myself a little bit more room to see the dimensionality on the mouth. 
and the teeth. And instead of just a square tooth, I'll give it a little bit of sharp edge. But again, I'm going through the black areas that I've already erased out on. This will allow me to make sure that I have the new areas that I'm selecting. Which again, I can hit backspace to cut out. Now when I click off of it, you can see a lot better overall, more area to work with and seeing how we can modify the design. If we want to get into seeing the effect of creating a glow, I'm going to look to create a new layer and I'm going to say inner pumpkin with the inner pumpkin I'm going to move this layer underneath of our pumpkin too because this is going to be the inside where we receive the guts or the seeds I can either use the polygon elastic tool with the inner pumpkin layer or use the elliptical marquee tool but the main idea is that we're going to select around the entire area where the mouth is within the pumpkin. With the polygon elastic tool, it gives you a little bit more control to make sure that we're drawing in the area. So you can be a little bit more specific to make sure that all areas are covered. With this area selected, we're going to look to change out our foreground and background color. We can do orange and yellow, or we can just click on the gradient tool which we're going to be using a gradient. There are different options that you can choose from within the presets through Photoshop. If I want to go through different options. The oranges have a number of variations that you can choose from. I'm looking for something that's going to have some vibrancy to it. So if I wanted to click on the fifth icon or the fifth option, we can see that we get a yellow orange color. And we can always modify this if we want to get a little bit more vibrance. I'll go a little bit more yellow with it, and this red is going to mute down to a more of an orange color. But we have a gradient that transfers from yellow to orange. We can always change the colors. You can make your own personal choices. But I'm going to look to use a radial gradient, and I have the yellow on the left side, so it will be on the inside of my gradient. If I'm drawing out a gradient and I click and drag, if I do a short line, we're only going to see a small variation within the orange to yellow. But when I click and drag, we can see that the yellow is just a very small area. But if I want to get a longer line, it will help create the sense that there's a glowing effect happening inside the face. I can go a little bit longer as well, but you kind of have to find out what is going to look best for your design overall. So once I have this, I can start to see we get some variation, but it may be a little bit too stark or the not enough separation because the oranges kind of blend in together. But I'm going to first deselect to see how it looks. And again, I'm just nervous about how the orange is appearing next to the orange on the outside of the pumpkin. If I were to hide this, you can see that I do have the area that I selected with the polygon elastic tool now filled with a gradient. But we're going to look to modify our color of our pumpkin. So we have to select on the actual layer thumbnail. So over in the layers panel, if I click on where the pumpkin image is, you can see that it highlights and will appear as layer thumbnail. With this layer, we can do some modifications to see how the coloring will look. We can first take a look at the blend modes over in the layers panel. If I go through the blend modes in the layers, we can see how different variations may look or appear. But even though with all these different options, they're not a blend mode is meant to blend in with the layer below. We are, we're just looking to darken this up so we can see our glow effect a little bit better. So again, with the pumpkin layer selected, I'm gonna make sure our blend mode is back to normal. But with our pumpkin selected, we're gonna to go to image, adjustments, and brightness and contrast. There are a number of different settings that you could do up in image and adjustments. But the most basic way we could adjust the brightness and this will allow us a little bit more control of changing our settings, seeing what type of vibrancy we can get overall. 
So I'm going to push my contrast up a little bit more. And we can see we've dropped down the brightness down, uh, down some. You can be specific with the numbers where I'm just really, again, looking to see a better separation between the eyes and the outside of the surface. If I wanted to cancel out and go through a couple different options, I go up to image adjustments. This time I'm going to look at exposure. With my exposure panel, if I were to adjust this left or right, we get a darker variation of our pumpkin. But I'm also going to look to create a little bit better contrast. And we can see that as I push the offset downward and drop the exposure, we're getting a darker variation of our overall design. I would not affect our gamma correction. This is not going to necessarily create differences in the color. We want to still have that darkness overall and still be seen as a jack o' lantern. Well, we're just going dark enough that we can now see the separations. I can click OK. And again, we always have our original pumpkin if we want to go back or need to make modifications. But now that we have our face, we're going to look to create some three-dimensionality. And it's important to understand that we're going to use a vanishing point. A vanishing point is where all lines go back to, helping to give us a center point that we can understand how depth of field is going to work and how objects are going to create the illusion of depth with one specific point on this object. So we're going to look to create a new layer. And we're going to rename this vanishing. With a vanishing point, I'm going to go over to my paintbrush. I'm going to look to just put in a white dot or black dot so that it draws attention and main focus of where we're going to create all our converging lines. Converging lines are the lines that extend back to our vanishing point. I'm simply going to click a point, And yes, it is an eyesore seeing that white dot, but eventually we will hide this, make sure that we cannot get distracted by it or it doesn't ruin your design. Again, you can always switch it over to a black color as well. It's all your personal preference. But now with the combination together, it creates a little bit of a highlight. So it's easy to identify and see. But now that we have our vanishing point, we need to create a new layer that's going to sit above our inner pumpkin. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the layers panel and create new layer. And we can rename this 3D or dimensions. Whatever you want to name your layers, it's how you want to keep organized. With a 3D layer, I'm going to look to zoom in first on our left eye, or left eye to us, the jack o' lantern's right eye. But the main idea is that we're going to be building off of our vanishing point. With the polygonal lasso tool, third tool, left side navigation, I'm going to go back over to the far left corner. And the far left corner is located below our vanishing point. So that means we're going to see the bottom edge of our eye as well as the outside edge of our eye. The reason why we would not see the inner portion of the eye is if I'm going back to the vanishing point, the corner on the top and the corner on the bottom are both covered up by the pumpkin surface. So we're not going to be able to see that side of the cutout. But if I were to look at the far corner, you see that it goes through the opening of the eye. So we're going to maintain this angle to help give us the sense of where the top left side of the eye and the bottom portion of the eye are going to meet. To get this angle, I'm going to look to extend out a vanishing point line, but I'm not going to click because I want to pull this back into the direction of where my jack o' lantern is. So now that I have the sense of the angle, I want to pull back over to the area that our angle would be. And I'm looking to create depth within my eye. So I'm going to look to click, click a point, move up, and create a parallel line to this left edge of our eye. So parallel means that they would never intersect. So I'm going to run it just like a railroad track or train track. Two rails would never converge or meet they would always maintain the same separation. But I am going to draw on the area of the pumpkin so that I can get back around to the selection that I want to modify. 
Before I do put it in a gradient, I'm going to make sure to select on the 3D layer. And I'm going to click on my gradient tool. Understand I do currently have foreground color black and background white. But if I take a look at my sample in the top, I still have the yellow to orange gradient. So with this yellow to orange gradient, I'm going to look to click and drag. I'm dragging from inner area to the outside area. I do want to make sure that I switch over to a linear gradient. And with a linear gradient, I'm going to get a better transfer of color in which I can think about the glow effect. Maybe a candle is lit inside the object so I can see a separation. And we can now see a, defi a definitive separation from the exterior of the eye and the inside where it's cut out in hollow. Now I'm going to look to draw out the bottom portion of this eye. And again, I want to make sure that I'm getting the correct perspective. I'm going to look to meet the corner in which it touches the left side of the wall. And I'm going to draw across. Again, we want to have a parallel line to the bottom edge. We use parallel lines to make sure that it is consistent in the angle that we would approach it. I'm going to go around the area of the eye, selecting up this back to the beginning point. And again, we're going to use a gradient. This time the gradient is going to probably be a little bit darker because of the fact that the candle would likely be lower on the location of the object. So I can modify the gradient. and I do have a more separation. I want to make sure that the corners are not just showing the same color, but we're seeing a little bit more dimension and a separate shade. I can draw it a few times until I get it right or until I'm satisfied overall. When I click off the object, we can now see the bottom edge of our eye and the left side now working together to create the dimension. So if I zoom out a little bit, I can see the overall eye. But we did add pupils into our subject and we need to create the dimension based off of our vanishing point still. So I'm going to go back over the polygon and lasso tool. And because we have a rounded edge, we don't have a point to work from. But what we can work from is the highest point of our curved edge. From this highest point, we're going to look and make sure to test out the angle in which we have our vanishing point. And I want to maintain thickness for this eye area. To maintain thickness, I'm going to click a point, and then I'm going to create a parallel curve that would never run into the left side of edge of this eye. So clicking point by point, when I get down to the bottom edge, this is my indicator or connection to the bottom surface. So that means I have to create a cut based on the perspective from our vanishing point. So with our vanishing point, you can see that my connecting line is pretty much accurate, but if I do need to step back, again, I can always hit delete and step back a few steps. This will allow me to make sure that I get the angle that I'm looking for. And I'm gonna to look to connect back to where I started. Again, we're gonna use the gradient tool and click and drag to create out an area of highlight over top of the selected area. I can draw out the gradient until I'm satisfied. If I want it a little bit shorter, I just want to get a little bit of orange on that bottom because it would not necessarily be visible. And I'm going to deselect once I'm satisfied with the area. And we have that cutout showing the depth of the wall of the pumpkin. And now we have to look to create out the pumpkin over on the right side eye. Again, if I do want to make any types of changes, I can use the gradient until I'm satisfied with the overall look and feel. And again, if I click off of it, I can see the now separation between the wall and the exterior of the pumpkin eye. 
So we're going to look to repeat the same process over on the right side wall in the right eye. I'm going to go to the polygon lasso tool, start on the bottom far corner, and I want to get the same relative angle. You can see it is very harsh overall, but this is going to be my indicator to be able to separate the right side wall to our bottom portion of the wall. Again, with the gradient tool, I can click and drag upward. I have a glow effect happening, so it has this yellow edge closer and then burns out to darker orange. Back to the polygon lasso tool, I'm going to look to match the same angle back to our vanishing point. And again, extend along the bottom portion to select out the bottom area of the eye. With this area selected, back over to the gradient, click and drag downward. I can adjust the gradient as needed. Finally, I'm going to again look to do the perspective for the eye. I can check, out, check the vanishing point to make sure everything aligns. If I need to redraw, I can always hit delete or backspace. And again, I'm going to shorten this up. And I'm going to look to round out a parallel line that's going to follow the same direction as the curve of the pupil. And I'm going to connect back to where I started once I get the bottom portion. And again, use the gradient to create out a gradient that travels and shows the depth on the eye. If I do need to make modifications or if I need to draw out new areas, I can always hold down shift and add in selected areas. It's going to give us a little bit more curve. And again, that's why I do like using the polygon lasso tool. It's a little bit more accurate, especially in comparison to using the mouse. But again, I can use the gradient click and drag inside the area to create out the surface or wall of the pupil. So we have the eyes done. Now if we take a look at the nose, again we want to use the vanishing point and the only point that we have to connect because the left side would be invisible or hidden behind the surface of the pumpkin, same thing with the right, only part we have to focus on is the nose or the bottom portion of the nose. And again, we're getting the angle so we, that we get the appropriate perspective. I'm gonna shorten this up. It is located below the vanishing point, so we are gonna see the bottom areas of the object. And you could do the gradient all at once, but this will show a little bit better variation of our three-dimensional shadows, or the edges of the object. Follow along the same edge from where they intersect. I'm going to look to draw out the right side. And again, using the gradient. That has dimension. If, again, I need to draw out a different gradient or modify the gradient in any way, I can always just click and drag again, make sure that the area is selected. So we have the bottom portion of the nose. Now we're going to look to do the mouth. And with the mouth, we're going to focus on creating the bottom perspective or the bottom perspective of the lip. I'm going to look to use the polygon lasso tool to maintain, again, a parallel line. They would never intersect, but it helps to grab and create the dimension for the bottom of our pumpkin. I'm not gonna worry about the teeth right now. This will just allow me to focus on making sure that I have consistency with the width of our shape. And then I'm gonna go around the pumpkin surface area 
and back around to where I started. So with this area, I'm going to look to use the gradient tool again, but the gradient, I'm going to switch over to the radial gradient because we're dealing with a curved edge. And if I click and drag from around the vanishing point, you can start to see a separation, but I'm going to extend the line a little bit longer so I get more of a yellowish color to represent the wall of our pumpkin. Finally, we want to look to place in the dimension for our teeth. Understand that the dimension are going to be different based on the shape of the object, but we're always going to be using parallel lines to help create out the verticals and the horizontals or the top of the teeth. Just be careful when it comes into a diagonal and understanding what sides are going to be visible. So we're going to look to focus on this bottom right tooth. I'm going to look to click on the polygonal lasso tool, and I'm going to start on the bottom corner of this tooth. We want to get the corners that would be visible that would connect back to our vanishing point. If I were to extend the line from this corner, you can see that I have a line that draws back towards the vanishing point up until it runs into the top tooth here. So I want to try maintaining that same perspective, that same angle, but we're going to shorten this and hold this where the end of our bottom lip or wall of our pumpkin is. So again, I'm just going to look to draw out a line, click a point, and then I'm gonna run a parallel line to this vertical left side of our tooth. I wanna relatively get, think about the angle in which it would go back to our vanishing point for this corner. I'm gonna click a point and then connect back to the corner and back to where I started. So I can use the gradient tool, click and drag. And again, I can switch over to a radial gradient if it helps, or linear gradient if I wanna get a little bit more clean line. But again, we're going to just continue to repeat the process for the tooth on the top. Again, wanna make sure I'm matching up to the vanishing point area but I'm going to connect over and match the wall of the side and back to where I started and use a gradient to draw this area out. So if I deselect, we have the left wall and the top wall of our tooth. We can't see the right side because it would technically be hidden behind the wall or surface of the pumpkin. So we don't have to worry about this line. So I can hit escape. Now we're going to look at the middle tooth. The middle tooth is a little bit tricky because we don't actually see any of the left wall or right wall. It's more settled in the middle. So all we have to do is focus on the top portion. And we want to get a sense of the perspective again. So I'm going to test it out, see what the example looks like. And again, we're going to shorten this line up. And I want to maintain relatively the same distance that we have for the other tooth or the surface of the pumpkin's mouth. And connecting back, getting the same relative angle that we would use for the vanishing point. I want to connect back to where I started and use the gradient. Finally, we have the bottom tooth with a diagonal shape or a spike tooth, a very sharp tooth. With the polygonal lasso tool, I'm going to click a point. And again, we still want to maintain the process of creating the perspective where the surface would be. So I'm going to look to click a point and then run a parallel line to this diagonal. The next portion I have to think about is how the corner or the point would ultimately connect back to our vanishing point. If I get the right angle, or if I mess up, I can always hit delete or backspace. But I'm gonna to connect to the top of the point, or sharp tooth, and then use the gradient to draw out the side edge. So if I click off the object, you can see that we've maintained the correct dimension have a good use of perspective, seeing the depth of the walls of the pumpkin, 
Now we're going to look to create out the perspective and depth on the top teeth. I'm going to start on the left tooth over on the side here. So if I go over to Polygon Lasso Tool, again, I don't have to worry about the top left side or bottom left side. I'm going to focus just on the bottom right side. Top left side, again, would be hitting behind the surface. But the bottom right side, I can look to connect that to my vanishing point, get the correct angle. And again, we're looking to create the depth of this tooth area. So I can use the gradient tool, click and drag. And if I deselect, I have the depth for that one tooth. The same method will be applied for the tooth on the left and then reversing the process for the tooth on the right. And then we'll finally take a look at the sharp tooth over on the other side. With the polygon lasso tool, again, starting down the bottom corner, going up to the vanishing point, which is getting a sense of where the perspective goes. And then running a vertical line that connects back to where we started. I want a little bit more orange into this design, just so we can see the separation of the wall. But that is enough to really grasp an understanding of how the dimension is still there. Then the right, we're going to look at that. Again, it's going to go in the direction of our vanishing point and use the gradient to draw it out. Again, if you need to redraw it, I can click and drag until I get it correct. And it's not necessarily precise on how the glow effect is hitting it. Remember, we have likely a candle inside, so we don't necessarily need to be completely accurate as long as we're seeing the dimension. Back over to the Polygon Lasso tool, I'm going to go to the bottom edge and look to see where I can connect over to our vanishing point. Again, this is not going to run all the way up, but we are going to maintain perspective until we get into understanding that the vanishing point is going to get a little bit tighter towards the top edge of the object. But again, with the gradient, click and drag. And I can deselect. Now if I zoom out, I have the perspective for the mouth, the eyes, and the nose. Now that we have the overall dimensionality, we're going to look to see how we can add some creative effects, like a glow effect inside the eyes and mouth and nose, as well as adding in a possible background. Now that I have the vanishing point done, I can hide this layer. I don't need it anymore. But we're going to use the layer mask that we have to select out the mouth, nose, and eyes. To do this, I'm going to first duplicate this layer so I can show you another process when we're dealing with just cutting out on an actual surface of a pumpkin. But I'm going to right click on the layer, duplicate layer, I click OK on the duplicate, and I'm going to hide the pumpkin 2. So I have pumpkin 2 copy, or I can rename this pumpkin 3. But we want to select onto our layer mask of pumpkin 3. And go with our layer mask selected, we're going to go up to layer. Actually, at the top navigation, go down to, up to select and load selection. I can click OK. But we're actually selected on the outside of the surface. I want to be selected on the inside of the eyes, nose, and mouth. To do this, I want to go back up to select and hit inverse. and it inverts into selecting out the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So we have all the areas that we need selected. But again, just go up to select, inverse. We have the area selected. We're gonna create a new layer and we can rename this glow. 
With this glow layer, we are going to look to fill it in with a bright yellow or even white color. I can find a combination in between, but I want something vivid that's going to stand out. So I have a yellowish orange color, and I'm going to use the paint bucket to fill in this glow layer with the selected areas. I just have to click in one of them, and it'll fill into all of them. I can Command or Control D to deselect. And we're going to use the Gaussian Blur to help create a blurred out effect, create a glowing effect, in which I can go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. With the Gaussian Blur, we have to adjust our radius. And as I adjust the radius, you can start to see the glow effect happening around the eyes and mouth and nose. You can keep dragging up, but be careful not to drag it too high. We want to create the sense that it's just a light source coming from inside the object, not overpowering the design and taking away from the overall design. I'm going to push it a little bit more, but I'm also going to drop the opacity slightly for the glow layer. Just so it's a little bit more subtle, I should drop it at about 90% you can adjust to your preference overall. But finally, just to give ourselves a little bit more background in the design, we can look to place in a picture. If I want to place in a picture, I've already downloaded an image from Google. I can go up to File, down to Place Embedded. I'm going to go onto my desktop in which I have a scary picture. Cancel out of that section. But I can click and drag the picture onto my document or go file place embedded. With this picture that I have, I'm just going to scale it up. I do have a black background, but we're just looking to place it over top of the area. And I can adjust the location, slide it over, that way I can pull up some of the other pumpkins that I see here. And I can en hit enter to place the image. But we need to move the scary layer underneath of all our pumpkin images. And we can always adjust the placement, change the location, adjust it to make it a little bit more interesting or captivating. But I'm also going to look to select out my pumpkin layers and move these slightly a little bit as well. I just want to make sure that it fits better to the design. So I'm going to make sure to select my glow, my vanishing point, my three-dimensional, and my inner pumpkin. This way I can click and drag it, change the location slightly. And now we have a close-up of our pumpkin image. Again, I can adjust this as need be to wherever it's going to help benefit my design. So if I'm satisfied with the design, I have this glow effect. You can take a look at different blend modes as well. If I want to go through different settings to see how the glow effect might modify your design. So you can see different variations of color within the design overall. many different options to go through. So if I did a comparison between the hard light and the normal, they're not much different. But it does give a little bit better separation between the two. So I'm going to go with a hard light. And if you did want to apply more effects, I could duplicate out the glow layer. And again, it gives it a stronger glow effect. But you also may want to change the coloring or adjust a different blend mode to sit on top of that one. Maybe I want to get more of a reddish tone. We can always change the color as well. But that is the process for creating out a pumpkin. I'm going to hide out a couple layers just so we can see a final element. And hide out my backgrounds. 
if I have my original pumpkin and you want to get into modification, we can look to distort and morph this shape so you have a more interesting pumpkin that's not just a standard design. So with the pumpkin layer, I can hit Command or Control T or go up to Edit, Transform, and choose from the options. But I'm going to look to choose out Warp. With Warp, this will allow me to be able to modify a number of pieces of the design, but I'm going to change the shape from this perfectly rounded pumpkin into something a little bit more interesting, dynamic. At the top navigation, I'm going to change my grid to a 3x3, three three, just so we can see the anchor points inside of the object. And I can click and drag areas of the object to change the shape. I click and drag on anchor points or drag from the middle of the shapes and see how it's going to break or modify the design. So again, if I wanted to create something more distorted, it does a very good job of morphing the shape. And we could also use the liquify tool. We'll take a look at that later on. But you can see how the shape is going to be modified based on what you're trying to create. So if I need to hit Command or Control Z to undo, it will auto it will automatically fix it. Or we can get really into distorted shapes, playing with different anchors or grid sections as well. But just be careful not to overdo it. We still want to maintain some type of shape. I want to make it taller, I can make it wider. Or I can get into more of a skewed effect where it might be taller. It's kind of up to you to see your creativity, thinking about what type of design you'd want to create for your pumpkin. I can pull areas in if I want to get a wider base or change the shape. Turn it more into a gourd or squash. Just have a more narrow variation and adjust the shape as need be. So if I'm satisfied with the shape or if I want to test the shape out, I can just hit enter, see what the shape looks like. Again, if I wanted to undo the whole thing, you can see what the original looked like. But Command Shift Z or Control Shift Z will allow me to see what a more distorted perspective would look like. You can still see that I can change the shape or create something a little bit more unique so that my pumpkin can stand out. But going back to the process, again, we had our background layer, I covered it up with a more decorative theme background. And then we have our inner pumpkin layer. The inner pumpkin layer is the glow effect happening on the inside. We have the three dimensionality, which looks very funny or doesn't necessarily make sense until we see our pumpkin. And then the glow effect to help create that more interest in the design and we did have our glow copy if we wanted more vivid and finally our vanishing point was our initial to help build out the perspective again if we did want to take a look at modifying out the location or getting into selecting out for a different type of glow effect the original pumpkin too that I had created a duplicate of, I'm going to select back on this layer mask. And I can 
right click on this layer mask and I'm going to hit apply layer mask. This will automatically apply it onto our th layer thumbnail. You can see that now we've cut into the subject and you can't undo the effects now. You could always hit step back, hit control or command Z, but if I wanted to select out the areas and build out a gl another glow effect, I could use either the magic wand tool, the fourth tool, left side navigation, click inside the area, hold shift, and select inside each of the four areas. This way with a new glow layer, I can use the paint bucket tool and fill in this space. I can again hit command or control D to deselect and then back up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and adjust the radius to my personal preference. Once I have that glow effect, Again, we have the completed overall design. Now think about what type of jack-o'-lantern design can you create? How can you make it unique and make it your own? Best of luck. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon.